everyone, I hope you're all doing well and having a lovely day. Today's video is going to be one that's been requested for years actually, and I've never done it before, but I thought now would be a good time because we've just, in recent months, upgraded some of our equipment, and I feel like I'm in a little bit of a better place to kind of advise people on what equipment to get if they're thinking about starting a YouTube channel or blogging. I get asked all the time what we use to film vlogs, what I use to film videos, um, what I use to take pictures. So I thought I would address that today and not only talk about the equipment but also what I use to edit as well. So the camera that we used for the longest time um, and all of the videos were filmed on it pretty much that you will have seen before sort of May of this year were filmed on this. It's a DSLR and it's a Canon 650D or 650D. It's kind of like entry level to medium like price range um, and it's a fairly old model now a lot of people upgraded to the 70D um, so this one's quite old now and it was getting like quite used um, so that's why we decided to upgrade I'm going to show you what I'm filming on now in a second what we've upgraded to um, but before I do that I will just quickly show you all of the lenses that I have I really feel like not only do you need like a good camera but good lenses really do help but in saying that as well you don't need to just go and buy really expensive stuff when you're first starting out because it's a big investment so you have to kind of think quite wisely about what you buy so this camera for example comes with a kit lens and this is the 18 to 55 millimeter and I always filmed all of my sit down videos like this on this camera and this lens so I didn't buy any extra lenses and I think they were pretty good quality I mean if you go and watch my very very first videos they were all filmed on my um, MacBook webcam if you can believe it but in recent years in the last sort of three four five years uh, people's equipment and the way people film has improved like drastically people are improving all the time upgrading their equipment and you don't want to feel pressured into doing the same thing but if it's your job like it is mine then you do kind of need to keep up to a certain extent production values are getting amazing for content creators on youtube so but in saying that i still think this is a really good camera and I'll try and link below this, uh, if it's still available, I believe it is. Um, but what, what I would say, if you're looking for a camera in this sort of price range, probably would go to the 70D instead of this one, because it's just a little bit of a better model than this. In terms of the other lenses we have, we have a 40mm lens, also known as a pancake lens, because it's very, very small and thin. Um, this is a really nice lens actually, it can take some really good quality pictures for the price, I think they're about £100 on Amazon um, and they're great as well for if you just want to go out and do maybe some photography or even videography um, but you don't want to take a massive bulky lens, this is a brilliant one and it makes your camera really light. I mean, it doesn't feel really cheap and plasticky. We also have two 50mm lenses. You may hear people talking about the 50mm quite a lot. So this is the 50mm 1.8, and it's a pretty inexpensive lens. I think you can pick them up for like 50 to 80 pounds. And this is the um, 50mm millimeter 1.4, and these are a lot more expensive. I can't think how much was off the top of my head they're a lot more. This one has metal components and it's quite heavy, this one's very plasticky but still this is a brilliant brilliant lens, definitely watch some YouTube um, reviews on these and these, I watch review videos all the time on cameras and lenses and that's kind of how I learn about um, photography and videography. I am in no way a professional photographer or videographer but hopefully in a way this video is that little bit more helpful because it comes from somebody kind of like photography and videography for dummies, it's kind of put in layman's terms because I'm not a professional so hopefully it makes it easier for you to understand if you're not a professional either. Just quickly the difference in lenses is like um, 0.2 of a stop or something ridiculous um, and the reason you want to get the lowest f stop number like the 1.4 as opposed to the 1.8 or other lenses maybe a 2.8 is because that gives you the most light possible and it allows you to create those really lovely blurry backgrounds that everyone wants in their photos um, otherwise known as bokeh but the problem with this and the thing that I didn't realize and I would have liked someone to tell me is that the lower the f-stop the more of the image 
is going to be blurred out which sounds like a good thing but what can happen is if you're not like really skilled in using the camera and the lens is you could take an outfit shot for example and you can look back at your photos and the background's all really nice and blurred but then your whole body's blurred as well because the camera's just picked up on maybe your nose because that's further out than your body or maybe your arm or a bag was in front and it's just picked up on that so what I would say is don't rush out, even if you have the money, don't rush out and buy really, really expensive equipment without first learning how to use everything because good equipment doesn't make a good photographer or videographer, it takes practice. Like An amazing photographer could take an amazing picture, just as an amazing picture on this camera as they could on like a 5D Mark III or something. Um, so definitely learn about what you're doing before you go and spend lots of money because we've made that mistake before. Um, and it doesn't always pay off. So, but in saying that, they're both really good lenses. We have been using the 1.4 a lot more and practicing with it, and we're getting better at using it. So, if you have any advice as well, do let me know. I'm always open to advice. So, they're the lenses we have. Now, I have filmed a little bit of footage on my vlogging camera, which I'm going to talk about first of all. Um, but obviously, because I'm filming on here, I can't show you my camera and lens that I use to film videos, and I can't show you the lighting and stuff. So I filmed it on here, and I'm going to put a clip over the top so you can see it all. Um, but first of all, I will just talk about the camera that I filmed that on. This is what we use to vlog, and it is the Canon G7X. Again, loads of vloggers have this because of the handy flip-up screen which makes it very easy to film yourself and see what you're doing and it's great for vlogging. The bad point about it though is you end up looking, or I do anyway, in this screen rather than in the lens, um, which can get a bit annoying for people watching. But if you can stop yourself doing that, then it's a really handy feature to have. Some people don't have this camera because of that reason, but I just feel like it gets the shot in a better, like it frames the shot better if you do have it. Um, it's a very good camera, I've spoken about this in a video recently actually about the things my family can't live without because we do love to take pictures on it and vlog on it. It has a lot of good settings like aperture settings and things um, and it's a really really handy one to have. On my wish list is actually the Olympus Pen, is it the EL7 or the EP7, I can't think off the top of my head but you'll know what I mean, like the really pretty one basically but apart from the aesthetically pleasing look of it, I've heard it's a really great camera so if you have it, I would again really like your feedback on whether it's a good one to invest in for photography, for vlogging, if I get more of the lenses because um, a lot of people have asked about this as well, like what lenses can you put on this and this isn't this doesn't have an interchangeable lens, it's fixed on there so if you are looking for one with an interchangeable lens don't get this one. I'm now going to insert the footage that I took on that camera so one you can see what the G7X is like and two you can see as if by magic the camera that I'm filming on so this is the Canon 80D we got this back in I think the beginning of May and um, we've been using it ever since and getting to know it a little bit more. Um, it's still not a full um, full frame camera, it still doesn't have a full frame sensor which is something that I would really like to invest in and I'd love to get the um, Canon 5D Mark III but I hear that's better for photography rather than video videography um, but I would love that camera, it's, it's at least double the price of this one though. Um, and as you can see on the front there's a rather hefty lens and this is the Tamron 24 to 70 millimeter lens which I personally really love but it's so so heavy to carry around with you all the time. A lot of people just like prime lenses like the 50 millimeter lenses because um, they don't want to have to keep zooming it in and out and apparently you know it trains you to be a better photographer if you're going further back and moving closer to your subject rather than relying on the zoom but I find you can't always do that I mean this is a really good lens in terms of the range that it gives you if you can zoom right into 70 millimeters you can get some really good bokeh on that um, but it allows me to also use this as a sit down filming camera like this because I can zoom right out to 24 millimeters which is a quite good range I mean if I wanted to film on a 50mm, I would have to knock through this wall um, and put this camera in the bathroom because 
that's how far it would have to be away for it to be with me in the frame like this. Otherwise you'd just see my nose, pretty much my eyes. So that's the only problem with 50mm lenses. You have to be far away from your subject to get them in the full frame if you don't have a full frame camera as well. So these were all the little things that I didn't really think about which hopefully will help you in making your decisions. As you can see my lighting setup is one softbox lens um, as you can, a uh, lens light. As you can see I just have the one but it comes in, comes with two. This is going to give you a better balance of light. Um, obviously if you have one on one side of the camera facing in and one on the other. But I just don't have room to store them. I haven't used two for years and years and years, to be honest. And I'm quite happy with my lighting. Um, one thing I will say is that flash that you keep seeing, and you probably see in videos, is the lens. There is something wrong with it. So I will just point that out. That Tamron lens is causing us problems at the moment. So we need to get it fixed. But it's so annoying. But there's nothing I can really do about it at the moment. It just did it. So I thought I would just mention that. But yeah. The lighting, that's not caused by the lighting. So one softbox lens I think is okay for filming. I'm quite happy with my lighting. But you can have two. They're fairly inexpensive from Amazon and eBay. And also the bulb in this, and I know I'm jinxing myself now, but the bulb in this has lasted years. Years and years. Like three or four. So they're a really good investment. Um, and you can buy new bulbs, of course. The last thing that you can see here is the tripod. Um, it's a cam link one and it has a code on it. I got it off Amazon. Again, I've used it for years. It's a really good one. It's very sturdy. It's metal and plastic and you can put it up and down. It has like a little wind up neck thing where you can make that bit higher and you can do different angles. It can do everything with it. So it's a great tripod to have. Really, really handy. Um, but you can get so many on Amazon and other places for really inexpensive price. Before I go on to editing, because I'm aware this video is getting quite long, a couple more things I will mention. We have a Canon remote, so it comes in a little pouch like this. Again, most of this stuff's from Amazon, so I'll link it below. Um, and you can take pictures with this wireless remote. It's really, really handy to have if you need to take pictures and you have no one to take them for you. Like, it's good, we use it for group pictures of me, Ricky and Archie, if we want one of all three of us, and no one's there to take it. So this is how you can just keep it in your hand, hide it sort of when you're doing the picture and you can just snap away and it will focus on you and stuff. Um, another thing you will need a lot of is, <laughs> SD cards, we literally have like so many of these and when I first started I would always get sort of the maybe 16 gigabyte, then I got the 32 gigabytes, then I went up a bit more to the 64 and now we're on like a hundred and something. <laughs> so I just keep getting more bigger, like bigger and bigger memory cards, but they are getting cheaper in price and you need to get ones with a little number on the front that says 10 because that's to do with the speed of the memory card and how fast it will um, import your footage onto the computer and other things that uh, like I'm not 100% sure on but you just need to know that if you're using like a DSLR camera it needs to say 10 on it and most of them do nowadays. I also have an iMac, it's about four years old now, still going strong, it's quite slow. On that I have a Final Cut Pro X which is what I use to edit all of our videos. Um, for a long, long time, I used iMovie. I literally, as I said, I started with my an i i Mac MacBook. No, a MacBook, a white MacBook, six years ago. Um, filmed all my videos on the webcam, imported it into iMovie, edited it, cut it all, and uploaded it to YouTube. And that was okay back then. As I've said, over the years, everyone's got that little bit more professional. Um, and there's lots of different editing suites and editing software you can use. Um, Adobe. Premiere Pro is it? It's obviously a very good one. I've never used that and I think once you get into something you do tend to stick with it. So I have Final Cut Pro X and it's very good software. You can import plugins for it uh, but you don't need to. There's loads of good stuff on there from obviously all the transitions, texts, um, effects, um, all the way to colour grading and stuff. You can get really into it. So Final Cut Pro X is a great one to invest in but you can do a lot of editing, a lot of good editing on iMovie as well. But I think that's everything I wanted to show you. I can't believe how long this video has ended up. It was meant to be a quick one. In some ways it's fairly simple what we use. Um, I know it might seem like a lot of money to spend when you start adding up what all of this costs. But obviously it's my job. So 
it's something that I do feel it's important to invest in and I'm happy to invest in and a lot of money goes into remaking, a lot of money goes back into making these videos, that's what I'm trying to say. So um, to make the production values of them better. These are all of the things I would recommend but I think if you're starting out there are cheaper versions of each of these things that you could go for. So what I'll try and do in the description box below is put all of the things I use and then maybe something below my recommendations for slightly cheaper versions that will still be really really good and you can work out if you enjoy doing this before you go crazy and spend thousands of pounds on equipment. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it was helpful to some of you and I hope I finally answered some of your questions for those of you that have asked me for so long to do this video and I will see you in another video soon. Bye guys!